Now on 18 Eyewitness News. A new program will show that St. Francis County is work ready. The South Iron Community Betterment Association picks up a top honor. Plus, veterans and their families will be honored at upcoming events. All of these stories are coming up. Not a bad day here in southeast Missouri. Plenty of sunshine and nice temperatures, but warmer weather is on the way. I'll let you know about that. Coming up in the Storm Tracker weather forecast. Coverage you can count on. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Fred Dawkins and here are the top stories that we're working on for you at this hour. The Farmington Chamber of Commerce is leading the effort to demonstrate to potential employers that St. Francis County residents are work ready. Chamber Executive Director Doug McDermott told 18 Eyewitness News that a number of government, community and business interests are working on the project. Right now we're working with a great group of community leaders, both the county commission, some different cities, chambers of commerce and business organizations on an initiative being led by the state's Department of Economic Development to get St. Francis County declared a work ready community. Now McDermott explains what, let's do it again, five, four, three, two, one. Now McDermott explains what the work ready designation means. Working with the ACT Corporation to provide testing to both workers who are already in jobs and workers looking for jobs to be able to show that they have skills to be successful in the workplace. And you know, when a new employer, manufacturer, company is looking to come to this area, it's important that they know that our workforce is ready to do the job. McDermott says Missouri is one of just seven states that are taking part in this pilot program. And now Dustin Kopp is here with a look at our first forecast. Dustin? Good evening, Fred. Good evening, everybody. Looking at current conditions throughout southeast Missouri. We're not too bad out there. 49 right now in Festus and St. Genevieve. Fredertown 48, as well as in Ironton. Piedmont 51 and 51 right now in Van Buren. Clear skies tonight for the most part. 49 degrees at 7 p.m., 47 by 9 and by midnight. Temperature around 45. More details on your forecast coming up a little bit later in weather. The South Iron Community Betterment Association from Annapolis won first place in Category 1 at this year's Missouri Community Betterment Conference. South Iron President Jerry Mills tells 18 Eyewitness News the possibility of winning the award is great motivation. It's real exciting and, you know, it's just, it's just a real neat thing. It's a real motivationer for all of us to work towards that all year. It's, it's not that it's important whether we win first place or not, but it gives us um, a little bit of motivation there to work all year long to get to go to the convention and, you know, see what we can win there. The South Iron Student Community Connection from Annapolis took first place in the youth division of Category 1. Jerry says the young people held a community cleanup beautification day and then opened the Hebrews Coffee House. And they invite all the churches and everybody in the community to come to that and just make it an evening of uh, talent and uh, just spend together. And they sell all different flavors of coffee and desserts. And it's just a real good community time that is put together for everyone. This marks the 10th first place finish for the South Iron Group since 1999. Well, DeSoto's 5th Annual Veterans Day Parade steps off this Saturday. Organizer Kay Kite tells 18 Eyewitness News all veterans are invited to take part. This is our fifth year. Each year is getting bigger and growing more and more all the time. We just want to get the word out to all the veterans. It's not just for veterans in this area. Uh, veterans in all areas are welcome with their family to attend this. And Kay says the festivities continue after the parade. We have a program immediately following the parade. And then, then after the program, then we have a lunch. We feed everybody. And then after that, then we, I get out and we get donations. And with the donations, we buy things and give them away that day. The 5th Annual DeSoto Veterans Day Parade travels down Main Street Saturday morning starting at 10 o'clock. Lesterville schools are planning to honor veterans and their families at a special program Friday. Superintendent Erlene Fox tells 18 Eyewitness News about their Veterans Day Assembly. Uh, 
we usually have some kids write poems, you know, do some readings, uh, some people sing local, people sing or group sing. Um, sometimes um, a class will do a project. Uh, usually we have some kind of a speaker, uh, representative, senator, uh, someone that's been involved as a veteran. This year, Fox says they're trying to do something different to honor area veterans and their families. Because, you know, in a, in a roundabout way, they're the heroes too because they have to continue to keep the household and take care of the kids or, you know, whatever needs to be done here while they're off serving. And, you know, so the, the family has a big part also, I think. Fox says this is the first year the junior and senior beta clubs are putting the Veterans Day program together. And when we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, how you can make this a brighter Christmas for some foster children in the parkland. That story coming up only on 18 Eyewitness News. When you're looking for quality home furnishings, appliances, and more, look no further than Heartland Furniture and Appliance. Heartland Furniture and Appliance offers great low prices every day with 90 days same as cash, easy payment plans to fit your budget, no hassle leasing, and great customer service. With three locations to better serve you, the customers, in Donovan, Dexter, and Piedmont on both sides of Main Street. Heartland Furniture and Appliance, call 223-3200. watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins and Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. 18 Eyewitness News continues. You can make this a brighter, happier Christmas for an area child in foster care. Harvest Christian Center will host this year's Foster Children's Christmas Party. That'll be on December the 11th. Organizer Tammy Jones tells 18 Eyewitness News there's a number of ways you can sponsor a child's Christmas. Um, for all the children that are 12 and under, we, we provide, the parents provide us with a wish list, the foster parents, and um, they, there's a $75 limit, of course, on that wish list, so they can go out and buy and shop for that child of things that they've asked for. Foster kids over 12 receive a $75 gift card. The party brings together more than 300 foster children from St. Francis, Washington, Madison, and St. Genevieve counties. And Tammy says for some, it's a rare opportunity to see their brothers and sisters. A lot of times, if you have multiple siblings, a lot of times they get separated. And maybe one time a year or just several times, this is one time they can come together. All the siblings get to meet together, they get to play together, they get to eat pizza together, they see Santa. And for that one day, they get to forget about the responsibility or the load that's on their shoulders or maybe the thinking that this is my fault, the reason why I'm placed in this home. If you'd like to sponsor a child's Christmas or make a cash donation, you'll find all of the details by clicking this story at our website, kdkz18.com. Former State Senator Rob Mayer of Dexter has gone from lawmaker to dealing with lawbreakers. On Tuesday, Mayer was elected circuit judge for the 35th Judicial District. A Dexter native, Mayer was elected to serve in the Missouri House of Representatives in 2002, or rather 2000 and 2004, and was elected to the State Senate. He won re-election in 2008 and last year was the Senate President Pro Tem. The 35th Judicial District covers Stoddard and Dunklin counties. Well, the prosecutor who brought murder charges against Clay Waller is stepping down. Cape Girardeau County prosecuting attorney Maury Swingle is leaving to take a job as a federal prosecutor. Swingle has served as Cape County's prosecutor since January of 1987. He'll work out of the U.S. Attorney's Office in Cape Girardeau. Under Missouri law, Governor Nixon will appoint someone to serve the remaining two years of Swingle's term. Assistant County Prosecutor Angel Woodruff is expected to continue on the Waller case. 
The former head football coach at Poplar Bluff High School will spend five years on probation. 39-year-old Shane Kirby was charged with stealing $1,100 in checks and cash from a football fundraising account from August to October of 2010. He entered an Alford plea Tuesday in Poplar Bluff. The Alford plea means he believes a jury has enough evidence to convict him but avoids a trial. Judge Michael Pritchett accepted the plea and then sentenced Kirby to five years probation. Looks like nice weather on the way for your Friday here in southeast Missouri. I'll let you know how high we'll go in the temperatures. Coming up next to your Storm Tracker weather forecast. When someone comes in a mental area's emergency department, our focus is giving them the best treatment in the quickest manner possible. We track every single patient, sending the doctors information before they even walk in the room. We have dedicated x-ray and CT equipment in our emergency department. We don't have to waste any time running all over the hospital. We know that minutes count in an emergency, and you can count on ER Plus at Mineral Area Regional Medical Center. Now, here's your Storm Tracker 18 weather forecast with Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. And welcome back. Let's take a look at weather headlines throughout southeast Missouri. We're going to see warm air last through your Sunday. Temperatures are going to start getting on the cold side starting Monday, with temperatures dropping on Monday as well. And then we're going to also see some showers develop on Sunday and last through Monday. 49 degrees right now in Festus, 50 in Potosi. Ironton and Frederictown 48 as well as in Cape Girardeau 51 in Piedmont and Van Buren and 50 right now in Poplar Bluff. Currently we have clear skies and 51 degrees here in Farmington. Feels like 51 with current dew point 36, 56% 56 humidity. That wind coming out of the south giving us a little bit more of a warmer fill tonight at this hour at about 7 miles per hour. Your day on Wednesday, plenty of sunshine throughout southeast Missouri. Really can complain. However, off to our west, Snow, plenty of it. A lot of snow in some areas, even one to two feet possible in some areas. Luckily, we won't be seeing that here. Forecast for tonight, 40 degrees, clear skies, south wind 5 to 10. Areas in the low 40s, some upper 30s. 39 in Van Buren, 39 in Poplar Bluff and Cape Girardeau, 41 in St. Genevieve and Ironton, and 38 in Fredericktown. Tomorrow, plenty of sunshine, mostly sunny, 65 degrees. That wind's going to be south about 10 to 20, 68 in Fredericktown, 70 in Ironton and Piedmont, 70 in Van Buren, and 70 in Poplar Bluff. Farmington may see a little bit warmer temperature around 67 degrees. Next several days, plenty of sunshine on your Saturday near 70 for highs. Then we're starting to see that cooler air come in. Not as cool on Sunday, though, but some showers push in the area. High of 66 with showers. Then on Monday, here's what I was talking about. The showers continue. Temperature of 45. Temperatures are going to be dropping all day long. Look at that low, 27 degrees. Temperatures in the 40s for Tuesday and Wednesday with plenty of sunshine. So the sunshine will hopefully make it feel a little bit warmer. And then on Thursday, high of 50 with partly sunny skies. Another look at our weekend forecast here in southeast Missouri. Saturday, plenty of sunshine, high of 70, low of 55. A little bit cooler on Sunday with high of 66 and some showers in the area. Check out my Twitter page at Dustin Cop underscore KDKZ and like me on Facebook, K, uh, Dustin Cop KDKZ as well. You get the latest weather forecast at our website, KDKZ18.com. Just click on the weather tab. Fred, back to you. Our two-minute tour of Missouri starts in Jefferson City, where State House Republicans gathered Wednesday to elect their leaders for the upcoming legislative session. Tim Jones of Eureka will remain House Speaker, Jason Smith of Salem moves up to Speaker Pro Tem, and John Deal of Town & Country replaces Jones as Majority Floor Leader. 
Shelley Keeney of Marble Hill will serve a second term as caucus chair. Now, after Tuesday's vote, Republicans now have 110 House seats, meaning there are enough Republicans in the House and Senate to override a governor's veto. Missouri voters turned out in big numbers for Tuesday's election, but not as big as in 2008. Secretary of State Robin Carnahan's office said 2.7 million people, or almost 66 percent of registered voters in Missouri, cast a ballot in the general election. But the raw numbers and the percentages were down from 2008, when a record 2.9 million voters, or just over 69 percent, went to the polls. A St. Joseph woman has been arrested in the death last month of her bedridden, or bedridden four-year-old daughter who had cerebral palsy. 21-year-old Alexander Schur was charged with involuntary manslaughter Wednesday. Court documents show that between October the 9th and 10th, Schur did not check on her daughter, who was using a feeding tube for almost 20 hours. An autopsy showed the girl died of an airway obstruction. Missouri's Task Force One has returned from New York after assisting in recovery efforts after Superstorm Sandy. During its mission, the force checked almost 4,200 homes, helped more than 3,500 people, and covered roughly 34 miles of streets. Beyond going from door to door to determine the safety of people in the affected areas, Task Force members also handed out food and water. And hunters ages 6 through 15 checked more than 19,000 deer during the first weekend of Missouri's deer youth hunt, a 17.6% increase over last year. The top harvest counties were Franklin, Osage, and Howell. Department of Conservation scientist Jason Sumners says greater participation is the number one factor in the continued increases by young hunters. And that's your two-minute tour of Missouri for today. I'm Stacy Johnson. Want a good score? Well, you gotta play by the rules. And you know, so many people don't even know the rules when it comes to credit scores. Five credit score myths, just ahead on Money Talks News. Your health is brought to you by Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy. Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy of Deloge, where caring for you and about you is our business from taking time to explain your medication, offering a caring touch to a full line of medical equipment, supplies, and diabetic shoes. We'll help you understand your options and assist you with Medicare drug plan enrollment with a comfortable waiting area, convenient drive through or free delivery. Caring for our neighbors is our business. Your locally owned Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy just off of Highway 67 at the Deloge exit. It's one of the most important components to your financial life, your credit score. There are many myths about how to achieve a high score, and money reporter Stacy Johnson shows us how to, what's true, and what isn't true. Before you can get a high score, you gotta know the rules of the game. But if you're shooting for a high credit score, you really need to know what the rules are. Visa recently conducted a survey and found that a lot of people don't. For example, does your income matter to your credit score? Oh yeah. 64% of those surveyed thought the same thing, but your income has nothing to do with your credit score. What about your work history? I would think so. 60% of survey respondents thought work history mattered also. No. What if life deals you a bankruptcy? Does that affect your payment history? As it happens, yes it does. That's something only 13% of people knew. How about what you own, money you have in the bank? Does that influence your score? 53% of respondents thought so. Wrong again. Your score is based on your credit history, not what you make or what you've got. Final fallacy, 39% of people thought age mattered. Also wrong. Your age, your race, your sex, all totally irrelevant. Bottom line, there's no score in your life more important than your credit score. Take a few minutes to learn what matters. Want some quick tips to improve your score? Well, they're right here at moneytalksnews.com. I'm Stacy Johnson. And as Stacy said, he's got more information and links at his website. To get there, just go to our website, kdkz18.com, and click on the story under the Lifestyles menu. 
Getting the nation's largest subway system back up and running at full speed is crucial to New York City's recovery from Superstorm Sandy, but it's likely to be a long, complicated, and very expensive task. Jason Lindsay, a.k.a. Mr. Science with Hooked on Science, explains why using a few ingredients from around the house might show some difference. Some of New York subways are back open. But a lot of the subway systems, 830 miles of track, are still inundated with water from Sandy's storm surge. Why is salt water so much more corrosive when compared to fresh water? It's simple. The salt makes the water a better conductor. What does that mean? More electricity can pass through, which produces more oxygen. And when more oxygen is present, that means a whole lot more rust. I submerged both of the steel wool pads into the water for about five hours and you can see the salt water already. Lots of rust forming in just five hours. Imagine a long period of time you're going to get a whole lot more rust. Now you can discover this experiment that teaches kids about some science that's taking place in the news by going to our website. That website is hookedonscience.org. Go to kdkz18.com and click on Hooked on Science under the Lifestyles menu for this experiment and others that might get you and your entire family hooked on science. And coming up in sports, we're going to preview the first game of the Arcadia Valley Thanksgiving Basketball Tournament. The Cards' Yadier Merlina is now a finalist for the National MVP Award. Amazoo's Michael Dixon will miss the season opener this Saturday. Attention, Accutane warning. If you have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or inflammatory bowel disease, it may have been caused by the acne drug Accutane. Accutane victims have recently been awarded millions of dollars. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. Call the Rely On Group now to be connected with an experienced attorney. There is absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Call the Rely On Group at 800-698-3105. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs, and they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, call one. This is Sports Zone, only on 18 Eyewitness News. The 86th Annual Arcadia Valley Thanksgiving Basketball Tournament will tip off Monday night, November the 19th. The first game pits the number one seed, South Iron Panthers, against the eight seed, Lesterville Bearcats. South Iron coach Dusty Dinkins will bring an experienced squad to this year's tournament. Well, we lost one senior in, in Trevor Rubel, Rubel that was a nice player for us. Um, but we returned all four starters and we returned several off the bench. and. You know, we had a, a great run last year. We went 24-4 and four and, and had an outstanding year, and we're excited about this year and think that we're going to have a, a nice competitive team again. The Panthers and the Bearcats tip off Monday night, November the 19th at 5 in the afternoon. You can hear every game of the AV Tournament on our affiliate, Froggy96, Kickin' Country 105, and Froggy96Online.com. Cardinals catcher Yadier Molina is a finalist for the National League's Most Valuable Player Award. Molina is joined on the list by last year's winner, Milwaukee's Ryan Braun, as well as San Diego's Chase Headley, Pittsburgh's Andrew McCutcheon, and San Francisco's Buster Posey, who is considered the favorite for the award. Already considered the league's best defensive catcher, Molina led the cards with a .315 batting average and had a career-best 22 homers and 76 RBIs. As the season wears on, the Rams are starting to get back some of their starters. Pro Bowl center Scott Wells returns to the practice field at Rams Park on Wednesday. The free agent pickup from Green Bay has been out since suffering a fractured foot in the season opener against Detroit. He was then placed on the new injured reserve designated for return list. Wells is beginning a now three-week rehab period in which he can practice with the team but doesn't count against the 53-man roster. Missouri senior guard Michael Dixon remains suspended and will not play in the team's season opener Saturday against Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. Dixon did not play in either of the 15th ranked Tigers exhibition games after violating team rules. Coach Frank Haith did not provide further details while making the announcement Wednesday. Dixon averaged 13 and a half points as the team's sixth man last season and was expected to be in the starting lineup this year. 
That's today in sports. Fred and Dustin, guys, it's back to you. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Let's take a quick check at that forecast for the rest of this evening. Clear skies tonight, 49 degrees at 7 p.m., 47 at 9, and by midnight, temperature around 45. Not as cold tonight as it was last night, so that is a good thing. We'll have more details on your news, weather, and sports coming up tonight on 18 Eyewitness News at 10. The news doesn't stop here, though. Just go to our website, kdkz18.com, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. News Watch is next. We'll see you tonight right back here on 18 Eyewitness News at 10 o'clock. Do you see news happening in your neighborhood? Email us at news at kdkz.tv. Coming up tonight on KDKZ Channel 18.